So, what's it like to fall overboard in the ocean and swim for what seems like hours and still not be able to see the lights of shore? Fatigue sets in. Your arms and your legs feel like lead. Your mouth is so dry, even though as you look around, there is so much water. And then you slip beneath the surface. But you make your way back up for a breath of air, and you continue trying to swim. And in a little while, you slip beneath the surface again. But somehow, you fight your way back up, and you desperately search for something to hold on to. Something to keep you afloat. Because you know, if you go back down again, you just might not come back up. Ever. That's how I felt in my business after losing almost $3 million. We had been so successful for so many years, but now it seemed like no matter what we did, we were spiraling down. We'd pick up a new account, we'd lose an old account. Sales would go up, manufacturing costs went up faster. We were hemorrhaging money, and it wasn't pretty. Have you ever owed the bank so much money that it felt like they owned your soul? Now I was sitting across the conference room table from my banker. You know, bankers are an interesting breed. You know business is bad when you have to actually put on a suit and a tie and fix your hair to go see your banker. (laughs) Normally I go to the banker, but this time he came to me. I think he wanted to see the building, the equipment, and the inventory that he was about to have control over. I signed my name in seven places on five sheets of paper, clicked the button on the top of my pen, slid the sheets of paper across the desk, he collected them and put them in his briefcase. Don't you love bankers? You give them money, they give you a toaster. I want to find a banker that I can give a toaster, and he'll give me money. But the good thing about owing the bank so much money is, you know someone's always going to call you on a regular basis. Well, the banker left, and a little while later I decided to call my wife. Hey, Renee, how you doing? You know, I've been wondering... Have you thought that maybe now's a good time in our life to start considering downsizing? Yes, I know we have seven kids under the age of 15. No, you don't need to call your mother. It was getting frustrating. I was tired of owing so much money. We were losing the operating capital. We needed to stay in business to be able to solve our problems. And now everything I own, including my home, was leveraged and on the line. It was getting to the point where I was going to just print up new company checks, put all the important information right on there. The company name, the phone number, and insufficient funds. I was fed up with our situation. I was fed up with the debt. And more importantly, I was fed up with the excuses I was making that helped keep us in that situation. And it was right then that I realized that unless we stopped making excuses, we were going to continue spiraling down. We had to stop making excuses and start making good choices. So what's it take to be successful? What's it take to really be successful in business? Why are some companies so strong, so dominant, and others have such a tough time, even though they have equally great ideas and products? And why do some people earn money by the boatload, enjoy all the finer things in life, dine at the best restaurants, have meaningful relationships, and others live hand to mouth, have no real meaning in their life, and struggle just to take out from Taco Tom's? Why? Well, for the past 25 years, I've studied people and businesses with an eye towards success. And what I've realized is this. All successful people have one thing in common. Successful people don't make or accept excuses. They don't make excuses when they fail, and they don't accept them from others either. 
They realize that failure is part of the success process. Leaders admit fault. Even our founding father, George Washington, when he was asked, did you chop down the cherry tree? He said, I cannot tell a lie. I did it. And this 